the slow living my name is Esther and in this video I will show you the easiest way you can alter the length of a coat um, it can be a little bit intimidating because coats are generally lined garments and they're tailored they might have a back split or a back vent and so it can be a bit intimidating but don't worry I will talk you through how to manage all these things and the best thing is you don't even need a sewing machine we're going to be doing it by hand my one disclaimer is that since we are sewing this by hand, if you have top stitching in your coat, so along the bottom of your hem or around the front, um, you will have to be sewing that back by hand unless you have a sewing machine. So that's my little disclaimer is that everything else we can do by hand and it will be very hidden and very neat. But if you do have top stitching, we will have to undo that top stitching and then you'll have to sew it back by hand unless you have a sewing machine. The coat that I'll be altering is one that my husband thrifted from Savers Superstore. So coats are so great to get second hand because you can get so much wear out of them. And also this one here, as you can see by the tag, it was actually handmade in Hong Kong, I think. So again, thrifting garments is such a great way to go to give them new life and being able to tailor them to suit your own personal style is a bonus. So first things first, you'll want to try on the coat and then pin it up the desired amount that you'd like to take it up. I forgot to film this bit, but basically I got my husband to try the coat on and then I pinned it while he was wearing it until we reached the length <laughs> that we decided on. In the end, it was about nine to 10 centimeters in total that I wanted to take off the hem. And so I pinned that all around the outside. After he'd taken the coat off, I measured several points around the coat just in case there was a bit of variation from what I had pinned um, and noted down the amount that I wanted to take off. So again, for me, that was 10 centimeters. And once I had that noted down, I got a chalk pencil. You can get any sort of marker or pencil that will obviously come out of the coat. You can also just use pins if you don't have that so that you can clearly see the new length that you would like your coat to be. Clearly mark that all the way around the hem of the coat and make sure that your pins don't easily fall out or anything like that so that you don't lose your place. Once you have your new hem clearly marked, we want to measure five centimeters down from that. So approximately five centimeters or two inches down from your new hem length. And again, mark that with chalk or with pins. At this point, we need to be able to get inside the hem of your garment. So as you can see, my garment is actually hand finished. You can see those tiny little hand stitched lines, um, which is quite common for old tailored garments. You know, back in the day, things were very much tailored by hand. Today, it is much more common to finish tailored garments by machine. So this is a different coat that I'm showing as an example, which has been finished on a sewing machine rather than by hand. So at this point, it's just a good idea to figure out if your um, coat has been finished by hand or by machine. If it's finished by hand, you'll most likely be able to quickly unpick some of the stitching to be able to get into the hem and basically take apart the lining from the main garment. If your garment has been mass produced, the way that we have to get in between the lining and the main is through most likely the left sleeve. So you want to turn your coat inside out and look inside your left sleeve in the lining. There should be about a 15 centimeter gap where it's been sewn together like this, where you can see the stitches. That's because they leave this gap open for when they're finishing the garment, when everything's turned out the wrong way and they're sewing up all the seams. And then the last thing they do is seal that bit in the left sleeve. So turn your garment inside out, look inside your left sleeve and you should find this 15 centimeter gap that you can then unpick. And then from there, you'll have to sort of squirm your way through to the bottom of the garment. You'll be in the inside of the jacket now to be able to reach the bottom of your hem and then start unpicking the hem. So at this stage, our goal is to unpick the entire hem and that means separating the lining from the main fabric along the entire hem of your coat. As I mentioned earlier, you may come across top stitching, which means that you'll have to unpick the top stitching in order to separate your main from the lining. Just be very careful to unpick the stitches one by one. Try not to tear up the coating or the wool and try not to damage that as you undo all the stitches there, which will allow you to separate that main from the lining. One other part that you'll have to unpick is called the front facing. 
This is the part of the garment where you'll see the front on the inside of the coat has been finished with a bit of the main fabric joined to the lining. And that's so that the lining doesn't peek out the front when you're wearing the coat. And that's just called the front facing. From there, we need to unpick again the lining from this front facing, and we need to unpick it up to a point where it's about double what our hem was, so about 10 centimeters, and this will allow us to finish the coat properly. If you have a back split in your coat or even side splits, the same rule applies. You'll have to unpick a little bit up so that we can finish the coat really beautifully on all of the sides and not have any lining poking out. Once you've unpicked all those areas, you should be able to start to take the bottom of your coat apart and really see inside the guts. It's a really good idea to take a quick mental note of how the coat was constructed. So you should be able to see which bits are folding over each other, which, which bits were sort of tucked under each other. Um, and that will help when it comes to putting our hem back together. Now that we've unpicked the entire hem, you should be able to separate the main outer fabric from the lining fabric. Make sure that your lining fabric is well out of the way so that you don't accidentally cut into it. And now we can use that guideline before that was five centimeters down from our new hem and cut carefully all along that. Now our new hem should start to look something like this and we can fold it up to our new hem length where we marked it before and pin it into place. Take extra care at the front facings, so the front corners and also any splits that you might have to fold things really nice and neatly and make sure that everything that's hidden inside that corner is sitting nice and flat before you pin it down. Don't worry about your lining too much at this point. We are going to fix that up later, but for now, we just wanna make sure that the outer fabric of our garment is pinned up really nicely. And then we're going to press it all into place before we worry about the lining. Before we press our actual garment, it's a really good idea to use some of the scraps that you would have cut off from your hem to do a test first. Especially since a lot of coats are made from wool, you want to make sure that you're not going to damage the wool, that your iron is not too hot or that steaming your garment is not going to ruin it. So make sure that you do a really good test on a bit of scrap fabric first and that will save a bit of heartache later on um, from shrinking or ruining um, your actual garment. Once you're happy with the temperature of your iron and the amount of steam that your garment can take, we can then press our actual garment. So just pressing up the hem where we've just pinned in place, um, it should sit really nice and flat now. So much so that when you take the pins out, the garment should actually keep that shape in the hem while it's lying flat. Things shouldn't be moving around too much. It should be nice and crisp and nice and flat and that will make it easy for us to hand sew things to finish things off. Don't actually take the pins out of your hem though because we're going to hang up our coat to double check that everything is sitting really nicely. This is a really good test to check that you haven't accidentally cut things um, incorrectly. Now is the good time to double check. Once you're happy with how the outer is sitting, it's now time to tackle the lining. Basically, lining can come unraveled very, very quickly, which is why I'm not going to cut it. I'm actually just going to fold it up and tuck it in on the inside of the garment. So using the outer as a guide, I'm going to fold the lining just maybe like a centimetre shorter than the outer and then I'm going to pin that in place. Do be careful that you don't fold the lining too short because that will affect how the outer of your garment ends up sitting towards the end. You really want the lining and the outer to match up quite perfectly, which is sounds hard to achieve, but you can do it, especially if the garment is hanging up. You'll be able to notice that, you know, something's bunching up or something is sitting not quite right. Just do your best to match the lining to the outer as best as possible. I found it really helpful to work section by section, so make sure that you remember to remove those pins that are on the inside of your garment, and then you can use those pins to actually pin down the lining as you go. If you're finding it difficult to pin while the garment is hanging up, you can lay it down flat on a table like this and take your time to pin things as you go. Just be extra careful because when the garment is lying down, it's easier to get a mismatch between the lining and the outer, and we really don't want that to happen. Now when we get to the front facing or any splits in the garment, take extra care. Here you can see that I'm tucking my lining underneath that front facing. It's still folded up and it's sitting really nicely, but I'm going to conceal that lining in underneath my front facing and pin it into place. 
once you've pinned the lining to the outer of the garment, hang it up again and check that everything is sitting really nicely. You should be able to see any bits that are bunching up or if the mane is you know, being pulled up because the lining's too short or if any of the lining is poking down too long, hang it up so that you can double check this um, before we sew anything into place. I forgot to film this bit, but at this point we want to iron down the lining and create a really nice flat crease. You can still keep the pins in place because you want to hold everything together with the line matching up to the mane really nicely, um, but just iron it down so that everything again is sitting really nice and flat before we start hand stitching. So to do the hand stitching, let's pretend that this cream coloured fabric is the lining and I'm sewing that on top of my wool outer. You can start by tying a knot somewhere close to the edge of where you're going to begin sewing, but that it's going to be concealed by the lining. Just tie a double knot that can't be seen from the outside of your garment. Now take note of where that thread is coming out from underneath my lining, and I'm going to use the needle to enter the lining a little diagonal step down from that thread, and then I'm gonna direct the needle to come out about one centimeter down, just on the edge of my lining, down from where the thread comes out. That's a really difficult description to follow, but hopefully after you see me do it a couple of times, you'll get the hang of it. I'm going to use the needle to enter the lining, a little diagonal step down, and then direct the needle to come out just on the edge of the lining, about a centimeter down from that, and then pull all the thread through you'll end up with a couple of diagonal stitches like this. Now, when you turn your fabric over, you should not be able to see any of your thread on the outside of the garment. If you can see your thread coming through, it means that your stitches are too deep. They really only need to be shallow stitches that are stitching together the lining with the main fabric of your garment. Because our main fabric has been folded up, there's actually two layers of it there. So you should be able to catch the lining with just the top layer of the fabric of your main garment. And that means that you will not see the thread coming through to the outside. Do a couple of practice runs and I'm sure you'll get the hang of it after a while. I've used a contrasting thread here so that you guys can easily see how to do these stitches. But when I show you my actual garment, you'll see that if you use the same colored thread to match your coat, you really shouldn't be able to see the stitches at all. And it will look really nice and neat. Once you reach any intersections, such as the front facing line or the splits where you still need to sew those parts together, um, just simply tie a knot to finish off one line of stitching and then start a new line of stitching by tying a new knot, sewing that down into place and then tying another knot. Do take care with your hand sewing. You really want your stitches to be no more than one centimeter apart, and that's so that they don't get caught on things or they don't come undone easily. And um, the last thing you want to happen is for you know the edge of your coat to get caught on something, and then you rip all the threads, and all your hard work will come undone. So really take the time uh, to, to do your stitches nice and slowly, nice and neatly, and I guarantee that you'll be much more satisfied with the end result. When you've finished, your end product should look something like this. And the last thing to do is to replace any top stitching that you may have had to unpick at the very beginning. As you can see, my coat had some top stitching down the front here, but I didn't really like it and I didn't think it was essential, so I actually didn't sew it back. If you have top stitching that you would like to sew back, just make sure you choose the right thread to make it as unnoticeable as possible um, and take care when hand sewing or using a sewing machine to sew that top stitching back into place. As always, the last thing to do is to give it a final press. This will make sure that everything is sitting really nice and crisp and your hem should look really beautiful and finished by the end of it. So there you go. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and you can head over to my channel to find uh, more sewing tutorials on how to alter clothing and how to sew stuff that supports a slow lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.